Hi everyone, this is a video of um, the volume of solids using cross sections. You can see the objectives written here. Uh, this is typically a, uh, a session that I would have had in class, um, but it's created during the great pandemic of 2020 uh, to substitute what we would have done in class. So it's going to be a little longer than your normal video. Um, and I would take notes in it like you would be taking notes in class in your composition notebooks. Uh, so let's get started. So the first part of the exercise um, that I would do is um, adding to the laundry list. You have been keeping a list of the concepts in this class and we are to the section called cross sections. And so what I would do at the beginning of class is I would have you find the area formula for each shape in terms of the base. So in other words, I would take a semicircle or an equilateral triangle or a right isosceles triangle and I would place the base along the x-axis. And so you can kind of see that on this diagram. Uh, so I've got this square along the base. I've got the diameter of a circle along the base. I have the um, hypotenuse of a right isosceles triangle along the base, and then equilateral just means they're all three sides, so I just put one of them on the side. And so we're going to call that, uh, we are going to call um, this part that's along the base, we're going to call that B. So I'm going to put this little B here, um, and then the B on the square is along the bottom. And then I'm going to find the area formula in terms of B. So right, the area of a square is just base times base or base squared. Um, a semicircle, um, B is actually equal to the diameter um, of a uh, circle. And so remember that a diameter is just two times the radius, okay? So if I have the area formula that is pi r squared, well, I don't have an R, I have a B. Well, I know that B is going to be equal to um, 2 times R. So if I want to substitute for R in here, I'm going to have to put um, B over 2 instead of R and then square it. So this is going to be the area. Um, and then, so pi r squared is the area of a circle, but this is a semicircle. So I'm going to multiply that times a half, same as dividing by 2, right? So that's going to give me um, pi b squared over 4 squared, I mean 2 squared, which is 4 times 2, which is 8. So in other words, it would be pi over 8 b squared. And I want to write it in that way because I want you to see that it's going to have a number in front. For a square, it was just 1 b squared, but for a semicircle, it's going to be pi over 8 b squared, and that's where we got it. All right, so if this is a right isosceles triangle, this is um, the right isosceles triangle and the equilateral triangle are using the special right triangles, 45, 45, 90. So, um, so this is a 45 degree. These are 45 degree angles, and that's the right angle. And uh, from geometry, um, we know that we can find the leg if we let the diameter be, or excuse me, the hypotenuse be B, then to find the legs, um, they would just be square root of 2 over 2 times B. So since we have written um, the side, the leg, in terms of B, we can use the two legs to find the area of the triangle. And so it would be leg, right, because that is a right angle. So this would be um, one-half base, which is the square root of 2 over 2, B, times the height, which is the same thing, because it's this side over here. Okay, those two are the same. So that would be squared. So the area is going to be um, 2 eighths right, which is one-fourth B squared. So that's the area of a right isosceles triangle, okay? And then on an equilateral triangle, remember that each of these angles is 60 degrees, one-half base times height, right? So I need the height. 
So this, if I divide that into here, I'm going to have one half of the base, right? The side opposite the 30 would be one half of the base. So the side opposite the 60 would be square root of 3, right? So it would be of, this is one half the base, right? And then the side opposite the 90 degree angle would just be B, okay? So to find the area that this right here is the height, is I would have the area is one half base, well that's times B, times the square root of three over two times base, times the height, and if I tighten that up, I get square root of three over four B squared. So there are my four area formulas on known shapes uh, for cross sections. So I might have situations that are other uh, than those four shapes. And so I can figure out how to write them in terms of the base if I just write it out. So if I know that I have a rectangle where the height is two times the base, right? I have something that looks like that. Then the area of that is going to be two times B times B, which is two B squared. So instead of having a one half out in front or one fourth out in front or a pi over eight or square root of three over four, I would have a two. Now, if I have a rectangle where height is the square root of the base, right, I would find the area the same way. That would be um, base times base to the one half. So this would be area equals uh, base to the three halves, and so on and so forth. So the idea is that you're putting the known base along uh, the x-axis. Okay, so why are we doing this? Well, this is the original diagram from the very first screen. And so what we're doing is, is that instead of taking a shape like this, like this is a semicircle, you can kind of see all these little semicircles or rectangles or triangle or squares, right? That we're going to make the shape by putting different heights of the of these, of these known shapes to make a three-dimensional figure. So another way to think of this is this is actually a three-dimensional figure where you're not revolving the shape around an axis like we did for washer and for disc. So it's very similar to that, but it's, it's different. So they give us a base. The base is found by top minus bottom, right? And then, but you're making the three-dimensional object by using an infinite number of squares, rectangles, or um, uh, semicircles or equilateral triangles, etc. So that's what we're after. That's what we're trying to do. So here we are back to the, um, the laundry list. And so here we are, there's the title, volume of cross sections. You've already written that first part in your laundry list. And now remember that if you are uh, trying, if your base is perpendicular to the x-axis, it will be y equals. If it is perpendicular to the y-axis, it will be x equals. And then if it is perpendicular to another axis, um, x equals or y equals, those would be horizontal or vertical lines. Okay, so uh, once again, we're going to write um, in our laundry list the volume as it approximates. And so it's going to approximate the sum, here we go, the sum of all of the areas of each of the solid with respect to its base. So in other words, a square or a, uh, and sometimes they'll call it A of X like that, the area. And then that would be times the width. And so if I refine that a little further, this is going to be the area um, of the solid with respect to the base. So square, equilateral triangle, um, et cetera, the shapes from before. Okay, and then times the width, and the width is going to change. It's going to get really, really small, right? Remember that delta x gets really, really small. Uh, the closer you go to infinity, okay? And so um, if I want to write the integral, you can see how this looks. 
Um, if I want the volume, and it will be exact this time, so it's an equal, not about, uh, it will be the integral from A to B of the base squared dx. All right, and for a square, the base is going to be the function, right? And so that's for squares. Now, semicircles. It looks almost exactly the same. A to B, right? And when we did on the previous screen, we found the area of the base with respect to B, um, the, where we laid the base along the bottom. A semicircle had a pi over 8 sitting out there in front. So are you sort of seeing the B squared or the pi over 8 B squared, where B is this f of x. So right isosceles triangle is going to be the same thing. The volume is going to be um, 1 fourth, the integral from A to B of B squared dx heights, right, with respect to the base. And then so those, those formulas that we did on that very first page is giving us, they are giving us the structure of the integral to set up with a cross section. So what we're finding, and I'm trying to write and talk at the same time, what we're finding is we're finding the areas of all of those shapes, and then this is telling us what shape it is. And the squared is that, that height, that with respect, the areas. So we're finding the integral of all the areas and adding them up. And every single one of those areas has square root of 3 over 4 times b squared. But we're doing that an infinite number of times. And so that's how we're going to find the volume of that solid. And then if we have uh, the two rectangles, you know, the two rectangle formulas that we said. So we said 2b. So we have the integral from a to b of something dx. Notice b is not squared, and it has a 2 on the outside. So I want you to see what these volume formulas look like. So this is um, the square root of b times b, or um, this is times b, right? The height is square root of b, um, and so the area is the integral from a to b dx, notice that stays the same, but then I have this to the 3 halves. And so that's how you set them up, and it's pretty cool really because um, all you have to do is remember what the shape is or remember how to derive to get that shape, and then you can just write out the integral, and do it by hand or put it in the calculator. So here is an example of a problem that you would see um, and I gave you this, this is part of your assignment, um, and so I want to work two of them just like we would in class. Um, and so what we're looking at here is um, the shape that they give us, the shape right here, is the base. That whole thing is the base. And then we're going to set squares on top of that base to make a solid. So here's squares. We're going to set the squares on top of this base to make a solid. We're not revolving around it, we're just setting those on there. And so squares, semicircles, right isosceles, and equilateral triangles, right? So this is the base. Um, and when I mean base, I mean like that's B. So if I'm setting up the squares, right, I want to go from A to B, and I'll write that in a minute. The area formula for a square is B squared dx. Right, so how do I get B? How do I get the area of the base? Well, we've done that because this is the top and this is the bottom. And to find this area in between, right, you do top minus bottom. So top minus bottom. Well, the top is that 2x minus x squared. And the bottom is just x squared. So you've got 2x minus 2x squared. And that's going to be your function, the area between the base. And that, my friends, is what goes between here. So 2x minus 2x squared. Now, what do I, how do I know what the limits of integration are? Well, it's hard to tell, but this is 0, right? So this is going to be 0 in the bottom. And then be very, very careful with the scale. Look how they tried to trick you. There's all those hash marks, and that's really just one, so 0 to 1. So that's how you would set up a square. Well, 
All right, so all of the rest of these are going to have this, right, 0 to 1 of this squared dx, right? And I'm going to put 2x minus 2x squared on the inside. But this is a semicircle, so it has pi over 8 in front. Right isosceles triangle is also going to have this same part, except it has a 1 fourth out in front. And then put it in the calculator. You get decimals, by the way. And then same thing, equilateral triangle 0 to 1, something squared, dx, with what out in front? Square root of 3 over 4. So literally, it's taking what we learned and it's just adding this extra layer of cross-section to it. So one more of these, and this one is the circle, and it's kind of important that you realize it's a circle <laughs> because circles are not functions. They don't pass the vertical line test. So it's going to take two equations, right, to find the area of a circle with respect to y. So um, we'll notice, there's two things to notice here. Um, the first is when I'm going to find the area or the, excuse me, the volume of a solid that's made up of squares with this base, right? They're going to put squares all on there. Um, I'm going to go from negative 1 to 1. That's, well, it's possible. And then squares are b squared dx. Semicircles, pi over 8, squared dx. 1 fourth squared dx, and equilateral triangles. It's not that big of a deal to memorize that, I don't think. If I can do it, you can do it. All right, so the two things we're missing is we're missing the um, area of the base, right, the area of the cross-section, the base part, the f of x, and then we're also missing the limits of integration. Okay, so here's um, kind of what you want to think about this. So I have a circle. I know that the area of the top half is the same as the area of the bottom half, okay? And so if I did top minus bottom, I would get the whole thing inside there. But another way to think about this is that um, this is the top, and this is the bottom, and then times 2. So. If I have um, x squared plus y squared equals 1, because it's got a radius of 1, and I solve for y. y squared is 1 minus x squared, and then y is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared. So this is the plus, and this is the minus. Top half, bottom half. Okay? So I could say um, that the area is... Um, the top minus 0 doubled, right? That's one way to do it. Or I could also do the square root of 1 minus x squared minus negative 1 minus x squared. Well, minus minus is a plus, and how many of them do I have? Two. So it's the same diff. I get the same thing. So this is going to, I'm going to put a 2 here. I'm just going to leave it on the inside. 2 times 1 minus x squared is that's what the base is going to be. And I'm going to go from negative 1 to 1. Negative 1 to 1. 2 square root 1 minus x squared. Negative 1 to 1. 2 square root of 1 minus x squared. Negative 1 to 1. 2 square root 1 minus x squared. Gosh, that's pretty easy. So that's what you're trying to do is find the volume of the solid that has the given base with the cross-section. Okay, so finally, what I would like to do is go over the, this AP problem that uses uh, these concepts plus others. All right, And so it says, let R be the region in the first and second quadrants bounded above by the graph of y equals 20 over 1 plus x squared, and below by the horizontal line y equals 2. So above and below, top minus bottom, that kind of sounds a lot like that. So let's start there, because that's going to be the area of the region. So um, find the area of r, right, is going to be the integral of top 
minus bottom. So let me put that here. And then dx, right? And so the top function is 20 over 1 plus x squared minus the bottom function, which is 2. Now, the other thing that I need is I need the limits of integration. And remember, that's where the two functions intersect. So if I let 20 over 1 plus x squared equals 2, I would have 20 equals 2 plus 2x squared if I multiply this to the other side. Subtract the 2, divide by 2, and I get two answers, plus or minus 3. So those two, uh, the function y intersects with the line y equals 2 at two points, negative 3 to 3. Question 1 on a regular um, AP exam is a calculator problem. So you would throw that into the calculator and get an answer. I'm going to let you do that. All right. So on B, B says, find the volume of the solid generated when R is rotated about the x-axis. All right, so we have this function. I don't really know what this function looks like. And then we have y equals 2, and we've got that area in between, and here is the x-axis, right? So here's 2, here's 0. This looks like washer to me. So this is a revolution of solid um, using a washer method. So washer, you remember, looks like... Uh, it's got a pi out front, negative 3 to 3. It's got an outer radius and an inner radius dx. So that's the structure of a, of a washer. Okay. So the furthest away is going to be the y, so 20 over 1 plus x squared minus, and I'm rotating it around the x-axis, which is 0. Then the lower, the bottom, is y equals 2, and so I'm going to do 2 minus 0. Now you don't need the zeros, but I want you to see that it's function minus axis, function minus axis. And then the general thing is a washer. And then once again, you would throw that in your calculator and get a final answer. All right, then the third section is R, R is the base of a solid. And for the solid, the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis, dx, are semicircles. Find the volume of this solid. Okay, so remember what the structure of a cross section looks like. It looks like the area formulas. Well, the area of a semicircle with respect to the base is pi over 8 base squared dx. And then we're finding the base. And it's once again from negative 3 to 3. This over here showed me what the limits of integration were. And then I'm going to do top minus bottom, which is 20 over 1 plus x squared minus 2. And then you put that in your calculator. So here are all three right there together. The, find the area, so no squared on just finding the area between. Washer has a pi out in front, and a cross section is of one of those forms that we just went over in this video. All right, so I hope this helps, and um, I hope I will see you in class, unless this is 2020, and then I will see you on Teams. Anyway, cheers, everyone. Bye-bye.